Okay, uh, let's get started. <clears throat> uh, first thing first, uh, TA already give you the uh, answer of your uh, exam, right? So I would like you guys to uh, redo it again. This time you have the spreadsheet, you know the answer, and uh, you know give you more time. But the bottom line is try to develop the spreadsheet, the answer from scratch. I think part of the problem is, you know, two years ago uh, when I give the uh, uh, the exam of this class or homework of this class, I don't give the the Excel file. I just give the PDF and ask everybody, you know, develop the uh, PD, uh, the Excel step by step. Okay, and this time's okay. I feel like okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do it your way. Well, I'll give you the the Excel file, and the assumption is you use that to develop your own but you think through step by step, not plug and play. But at the end, I think some of you still plug and play. And the, the thing is that, you know, everybody thinks that, well, 16 number or 25 number, how hard could it be? How many different things you can, uh, you know, get trapped? There are many <laughs> different ways you can get trapped unless you think it through logically. So, I still feel like, uh, you know, it's, it, there are two sides of this, okay? Uh, I can just pretend there's nothing and then uh, just curve and, and then let you pass without caring if you really know how to do it. But uh, you're going to curse me five years from now when you actually work in the field and somebody asks you to design an experiment and then you just couldn't plug and play your Excel spreadsheet. Okay, please think it through logically. This is not a, you know, put your suit and ties on and then let's talk big type of uh, uh, techniques. This is uh, experimental design by definition is how to design experiment. And you're gonna get a de bachelor degree, BS or MS, right? And it's bachelor of what? Science, right? So what is science? Something you can repeat, improve, and defend your decisions based on those numbers, right? So uh, try, to, try, to, try to get that right this time. Try not to, uh, not to copy paste, because you copy paste, you get a full sense of security. Uh, it's gonna be bad. Originally, I planned to talk about SAS today. I I plan not to, because I feel like if I give you SAS, you will see that just click click two three lines, uh, everything will be done in the background, and then you will feel oh, so I get the numbers. Uh, the thing is that, guess what, what happened when you use something powerful like SAS? Later you can get caught and, uh, well, in system engineering, not always the case, but a lot of you could end up two, three years from now and say, oh, I would like to get my PE license. You guys know what's PE license, right? And when you try to get your PE license, that means what? You're gonna sign something later to prove that. And then guess what? That signature gonna end up on the good side is a very good salary. <laughs> on the bad side, you could end up in a court. And people said that, how did you cook your number? Right? You cannot say that, well, I got an Excel file, I plug it in and I got a number. You need to say that I think it through. Here is the logic and here is, the, is, is something you can defend. Uh, well, what I'm saying is that uh, 
do you think we can we can talk about this without right or wrong? We can, right? If you got a number, you got a number. You don't have the number. You don't have the number. You you cannot lie about it. You cannot just say that, you know. Uh, I I prepare for it. That's that's nonsense. Okay, so uh, yeah, I I still would like you to try. And the other thing is that originally I planned exam two will be more SAS oriented, but now I think we probably still want to do some Excel until you know I T A and I kind of agree that sufficient number of you actually can get the number from scratch. If if I see that, you know, you actually understand what is uh, what is that central station, what is that regression line, what's response surface, and everybody actually can visualize it, then we're, we're, we're using SAS. And SAS is really quick, but <clears throat> uh, yeah, was, you know, Triangle Park, now there are two different type of company. Actually, Charlotte got similar type of deals. One is what? Bioinformatic or you know, data mining, cloud computing type of company, right? They, they hire people everywhere. And the other one is those uh, pharmaceutical company because uh, we know uh, the reason. And the, the thing is that uh, so I think the job market is good. That's, that's good news for us. But yeah, I, I think it's important that uh, you, you can do it from scratch. Okay, do you guys agree with me? If we we plug in and then it's almost like uh, you have a spreadsheet, right? You dump in sixteen number, random number or whatever, you'll get some. A Nova table out, right? Agree. But if you just dump it in and get another table, a Nova table, does that mean you really know what's a Nova? What is regression? And, and well, I I I I want to uh, just say that please uh, go through that step by step and try to answer the questions. We, you know, you, you can look at it, but when you're done uh, reviewing it, you should have the confidence and say that, okay, I'm going to throw everything away. Start from scratch and step by step until you reach the uh, p value equal to some value. Okay? So, in other words, is that no, nothing uh, you can use. Okay? I even consider that some of the textbooks, they have the uh, F test, F distribution, T distribution, normal distribution in the back of the books. That's bad too. Because what you're really doing is that, okay, I check the books. The books in the back said 90 miles per hour, you're 95, I should give you a citation. But where are that 90 miles coming from? You don't really know, right? And that that that, that is, Kind of like, you know, you find a surrogate to pretend uh, you know the, the whole things, okay? I, I really think that you should start from scratch, nothing in front of you, okay? Uh, I don't have my PhD students uh, anymore. And guess what, what happened when I, when I have grad PhD student uh, with me? They love to do this. They love to use PowerPoint presentation. You well, know, I'm doing PowerPoint sometimes. Right? And what's, what's wrong with the PowerPoint presentation? Look nice, nice font, nice figure, not nice everything. And you just go through those things, read it. And with some animation, you feel like you know something. You know, what's the, the, the kind, well, even when I work for Liberty Mutual, we interview people, right? Uh, I usually will say that I don't want to see your PowerPoint. <laughs> okay, I want you to start from scratch. Here's a whiteboard. You go through uh, your code or your procedure line by line, how you're going to get to the bottom line. 
Okay? Because when you do it that way, you know you really know something. But if you, you, you rely on some cheat sheet or some PowerPoint, uh, yeah, you, you fake, I fake, and then we all fake together. And that's, that's wrong, okay? Uh, okay. Uh, let's go through some of the, the stuff again. Okay. Uh, here, here are some readings, and uh, what I pr prefer you to do is not go through a reading first. Go through the uh, three example first. I give you the Excel, right? The three example. Basically, they're doing exactly the same computation procedures, okay? And if you go through the Excel, <clears throat> okay, the only thing different is that, okay, you have the two by two was the three number, or the four number and four numbers. And then if you go through the Excel, there are three blocks, got a four numbers. So in this case, Okay, chapter seven and chapter eight, the major difference is there's no confounding. In other words, block is block. And so you see here, here are block one, here are block two, here are block three. So when you do the X transpose X, and at the end, you can dissect and get your sum of square out. Okay, and then for seven two, the example okay, you have two blocks, finish half of them, finish half half of them, so totally sixteen trial separated into two blocks, but this time, since block one got half of it. But block two got half of it. So the contrast, the differences between block one and block two, okay, is the same things as the A, B, C, D, because we use A, B, C, D uh, to separate the two blocks, okay? And uh, the things I ask you to do is this, okay? How many of you know that the block code and the ABCD code are the same things? How many of you can prove that? I have two, here, look at the graph on 7-2. 7-2 is two to the four, right? So how many numbers if I have single observation? Uh, 2 to the 4, uh, 16, right? And 16, I separate it into two blocks, okay? And if I separate it into two blocks, okay? People, can I use A as this, the, the separation and say A positive in one block, A negative in one block? Can I do that? Can I? Well, if I do that, I, I, I'm confounded uh, um, something very uh, important, right? Can I use uh, B as the, uh, the, the separations? Sure, I can use any one of them. I can use A, B, C, A, B, D, anything you want. But the one we did is using A, B, C, D. And I already 
uh, did it before, I can show it again. A, B, C, D, if you use the product of the A, B, C, D, oh, wait, I don't have it here. I, uh, Uh, let me see. Yeah, okay. If I use the product of A, B, C, D, okay. You'll see that the block in ABCD exactly the same sign. In other words, whatever I can use the contrast, the effect I can use to talk about the block and I to talk about the ABCD are the same things. So in exam two or in the the future, what really important is this, okay? Computationally there's no difference between what we did right now and what we did before uh, exam one, right? It's just x transpose, x transpose to x, and then find the sum of square and everything. But what is the, uh, the major differences between exam one and exam two? Uh, young man, are you sleepy in the back? No, further back. No? Okay, so can you tell me uh, what's the difference? You know, we're doing the same x transpose x, x tra inverse x transpose y computation, right? We're not doing anything different from the exam one. So everything's we're computationally, you know, Excel is Excel. What's the difference between exam one and exam two? What's the difference between exam one and exam two? Will we be doing that in SAS? Huh? Everything will be done in SAS? Uh, no, I, originally that was the plan for exam two. Everything will be in SAS. But now I, I said I still want to use Excel for a while because I don't feel confident. Because I, the minute I let you use Excel, uh, use SAS, it's easier for me to make up exam, easy for the TA to grade. The problem is, uh, you know, you know the expression, the emperor has no clothes, you know. So, so in other words, is that we're, we're just afraid to point at the emperor and say, hey, the emperor is naked, okay? So that's not the point. The point is, what I'm trying to say is, exam one and exam two basically said, hey, I can use the block as my stepping stone to make my computation easier. So in other words, is that here, the minute I say A, B, C, D, and this is the same, do you think we really want to run 16 trials? This, this you know, it's easy for me to random number everything, right? In the, in the classroom, it's a few seconds. But in real life, you need to collect data. You need to clean, you need to uh, wash the tubes and do a lot of uh, labor intensive and cost a lot of money, right? How many of you think that, uh, you know, we, we did all kinds of testing for right now using 3D printing to do a lot of substitute uh, parts design. It's very popular right now. Okay, they even said that in the future we probably will have a 3D printer in Mars or on Mars or, or have a lunar base. And, you know, they just use whatever the material they can uh, get from Mars or, or on the moon and then print the parts, okay? And when you do that, how do you know your parts are reliable? You need to run some experiment on Earth to make sure that happened, right? And for that kind of stuff, you know, 
It's 3D print everything. It's cheap. But it's really cheap. Relatively cheap than before. It still costs tons of money. So you need to prove that uh, it's, it's doable. So what I'm trying to say is that exam one and exam two, the major difference is what? Come on, people. What's, what's the difference? You're a system engineer. If people ask you that questions, why you use block? We talk about this in exam before this, the beginning of the semester. What, what, what is the, uh, the reason we run blocking design? It's time and money. We want to save time, we want to save money. Sooner or later, I don't want to do here. I know I can do three blocks. Okay? I know that I can separate things into two blocks. But the reality is what? I know how to do this in order to do it only half, only a fraction of it. Okay, that's why it's called fractional factorial design. Right? So, so in other words, is that if you're coming in and tell me that, oh, I'm going to full factorial everything, why should I hire you? I want to hire someone who can just use half of the, uh, the money, half of the budget, and tell me the same thing. Okay? So the uh, exam one and exam two, the major difference is you need to prove to me that you can run experiment, okay, or design experiment only using still x transpose x, x transpose y, but you only use a fraction of it. And if you do that, okay, then later on, we can say what? Well, if I can, here, uh, let, let's, the, uh, the stuff actually I plan to do is this, on 7, 1, 7, 2, or 7, 3, okay? People, if I said I'm only using two blocks out of three from 7, 1, do you think you will get the same? Here, look at table one, uh, uh, table 7, 2. A is significant, right? B is significant, AB is not significant, right? Right? And if I said that, can you prove that only using any two blocks rather than three? Do you think you can do that? It's doable. Same computation and everything. And if you can do that, that means what? Your colleagues will get Christmas bonus if he only used two out of three blocks and you using three blocks. Why? The boss will say that, hey, each block cost me 10 grand. Three blocks is 30 grand. But your colleagues can do t using two grand to get that. So I give him five gr grand as Christmas bonus. To the boss, that's still a good deal, right? Yeah, that's, 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 that's the, uh, uh, the part that I would like you to, uh, uh, to do. So seven two is the same things, okay? There are block one and block two. Here is the uh, ANOVA table you're gonna build, okay? If I'm only using a fraction of it, only half of them. So in other words, is that if I run the experiment and then say that, okay, I'm gonna do X transpose, X, X transpose Y only using the upper A observation or the bottom A observation. So in other words, now I'm using a fraction of it. I'm still getting the same answer. Uh, the same significance, okay, then I don't want to do two blocks. And seven three, the same things. This time is, you know, I have eight trials, okay, confounded by different things in order to have the effects out. And then what it's really saying is that for all the uh, effects I try to investigate, if I can get the same number on the significance part. Okay, so what is important, what is not important, still the same. Then do I need to run the whole things? Okay, 
that is the the motivation behind exam one and exam two, and so uh, yeah, I can I can tell you that what what will happen in exam two will be I give you something, and I said that okay, uh, how many different way I can uh, uh, here, you guys know the expression a uh, bunch of blinds try to figure out the elephant right. The blinds and the, there's an elephant. Nobody heard that expression before? Okay, let me see if I can Google it. Okay. Blind. An elephant. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that, that image is bad. Let me try a different image. Okay, so whoop, that's bad too. I'm trying to. Okay, maybe this one. Okay, so there are five people blind trying to figure out what is an elephant. Never because the blind never seen an elephant. Okay, you touch the trunk, you see the elephant as what one big hose, right? You touch the ear, you see one thing. See, touch the tail, you see something different. So what will be the, uh, the, the argument you have here? You need a full factorial design to figure out uh, the shape of the elephant. But in reality, sometimes I can use only half of the deal to figure out the thing I need to figure out, okay? So, <clears throat> for the... Uh, Another set of homework, after you guys finish the exam, I'll do the same things for seven, one, seven, two, seven, three, and uh, I'll get a few. Here, let me find the A1, A2, A3. Uh, do I have chapter A? Okay, here we go. So here is the, the part that I'm going to ask you to do. It's this. For every trial, okay, you can use the upper half, you can use the lower half, A1, A2, okay? Or, you know, basically discount what's one fraction of the x transpose x and then do the computation. I give you the sum of square. And your job is to figure out that is there any difference? And why you need to figure out is there any difference? Because if there's no difference, means that from now on, you can use a fraction of it. But if there's a big difference, then you have to uh, use the four factorial design, okay? How many of you download SAS already? Any, everybody download SAS or not yet? Okay, so I just stop. Oh, I still can. Huh? Okay, I need to ask the school, uh, the mosaic, to uh, have the SAS available. Uh, Huh? So there is a university, well, for us, university edition is, you don't need industrial editions. In, university edition is good enough to run through most of uh, the works we need to do, okay? Uh, only you're de dealing with cloud computing or, or data mining, you need the uh, uh, larger version. No, I asked Mosaic to download one for me here. Obviously, it's still not working. Okay, and what I plan to do is 
one sass is uh, loaded for every homework we did in Excel, we'll repeat one more time. But this time, just using the SAS code. And uh, to show you that how you can get the, the answer, okay? And that one takes uh, too long. Okay. Uh, Let me get through this. Okay, now I, I want to show you in expressions that this can be used in uh, the, uh, the computation of which part to save. Okay, this is done in the old days when Excel is not available. People are using Fortran to do it. So if you're using Python and writing Python code, and this is the similar way to do it, it's, it's the following, okay? Uh, I already show you, right? You can sort all the positive on one side, all the negative on one side, or, you know, two column, both positive, both negative, one positive, one negative, to separate them into four blocks. Can I separate them into eight blocks using three confounding factor, just two by two by two, and to do that, and then and just sort, okay? But in, in uh, the conventional way, you're writing it like this, okay? You write it as a linear constraint, A, X1, X2, X3. So watch here. If I have A, B, C, three factor, will be right as L is X1, X2, X3, okay? And then when I uh, put it down, I can just have the 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2 uh, computation. So every time positive and negative, you just put 0 and 1. That is the, uh, the code you put it in like before. So when you put a code in, the sum product will equal to what? Either one or zero, right? So when it end up with one or zero, you basically said, hey, one on one side, zero on the other side. Then you can separate this whole thing into two blocks, okay? And the other thing is uh, this, okay? We basically said that when you have two things, uh, you uh, confound it, Okay, and you can tell A, B, A, C become A squared B, C. And remember, well, well, uh, this is based on a negative one, positive one uh, expressions. A squared, negative one squared and positive one squared, the same. So no matter A, negative one or positive one, uh, doesn't matter. So you can separate the whole things by using this 0, 1, 0, 1 combination was the mall to uh, block them into two blocks, okay? <clears throat> and here is the 4, and uh, to the, the K components, okay? And When you have two blocks, and I mean, first time you uh, block one thing, and second time you block another thing, okay? So in other words, the replica of one using ABC as the confounding, and then second uh, replica use AB as the confounding, third block use BC uh, and AC. So in other words, every replica, you're using different thing to to separate them. This is called partial confounding because here I confounding one thing. Here I confounding another thing. Here I confounding another thing. Here I confounding another thing. If four blocks, I mean four replica with four different confounding, what's the benefit? 
What's the benefit of every replica using different confounding factor? So if it turns out that the ABC effect is significant, then when you replicate it again with the AB effect, then you can test and see how it changes from yeah, one confounding to the other. So in other words, is that there are a bunch of blind trying to figure out the elephant. Nobody got a full picture, but now at least we have enough of them testing the trunk, some testing the ears, some testing the legs. So in other words, is that nobody have the whole picture, but the overlapping, the overlapping still give you some idea of the elephant, agree? The, the only thing that's important here is, can anybody tell me, are, will we use, when, sure, when we do the major confounding, we don't want to use many effect or two-way interaction, right? We want to keep the resolution high. When we do partial confounding, will we surrender and say, uh, let me do A, confound A, confound B, many effect? in partial confounding? We could, but usually we still try to stay out of it. So generally speaking, I don't care. You're doing partial confounding or uh, you're doing, you know, uh, whole conf So in other words, I can have this, this replica here. Young man, I didn't, I asked you a question, you didn't answer me. So let me try this one for you again. You. You, can you hear me? Okay. Can I have replica one, replica two, replica three, replica four? All four doing ABC confounding, ABC confounding, ABC confounding. Can I do that? Why not? Uh, I want to be different, but can I say that I don't want to be different? I just want to ABC all the way. Can I do that? Can I do that? Okay, let me, let me ask you the question this way. Let me give you the answer. I can do that. I can just ABC confounding, ABC confounding, ABC confounding, ABC confounding, boom, boom, boom. Or shots, just confound ABC. Okay? But obviously I did not do that. Okay? What's the difference between the two? This is the type of questions I would like to ask in exam two. Because in exam one, you already have the mechanics done if you train good enough. Do you think that's an intelligent question to ask? Or your boss should ask? Why we want to do partial confounding? Why can I confound all the way? Say that. Why? If I confound ABC all the way, what does that mean? Or basically said that, you know what, elephant tail is something we don't care at all. Even you tell me elephant tail is very, very significant, important, I don't care about elephant tail, which is ABC confounding. And if that's the case, I'll just say that, give up ABC. So in other words, fractional confounding versus, you know, full confounding. Which one usually got more confidence? If you're doing full confounding, means what? I know for sure something I don't care, and I don't care. Okay? But if you kind of like, uh, I don't have the guts to say that, then I'll say that, okay, let me give you a little bit chance to investigate that. That's the difference between partial confound and full confound. You guys see the difference? Huh? Yeah, this is, this is uh, the 
the things, yeah, the, the smart, uh, the intelligence you would like to, to have, okay? Okay, and uh, let me spend a little time on what we're gonna do for uh, after I finish the after you guys finish the uh, redo the exam. I give you the second part of the homework uh, cover what I just uh, did. Uh, after that, we're gonna get into the uh, three-way factorial design. Okay, and what is the difference between two-way and three-way factorial design? Anybody? You know, of course, you know, uh, for an intro class, we're we'll stop at a three way. I can go four way, five way, but it doesn't uh, matter. Usually we, we can go with three way factorial design. What's the difference between two way factorial design and three way factorial design? Here, in two-way factorial design, in two-way factorial design, either A is low or A is high. B is low or B is high, right? Right? Three-way factorial design means what? You have, will have three levels, okay? So, basically, you can have a low, medium, high. Low, medium, high. And if you have low, medium, high, what are you really looking for? So, I, I, you know, I, if I show you the Excel and you guys just copy paste, it's, you know, five minutes done. Okay? But I don't want to do that. I want you to think about it. Why I want to have three level? Anybody? Last time you answer blocking really well. I want to give a shot? Oh, okay. Young man, your turn. What's the question again? We just going to finish the two-way factorial design, right? Yeah. But now we're saying that, okay, I want to do, you know, a three-way factorial, three, uh, here. Three level, low, medium, high. When I do low, medium, high, Rather than just you know low a high a, what what does the the uh, low medium high three level gonna give me? More um, intersections between the points. Uh, okay, and there's something else. Okay, here you're all them. Okay, if it's linear. Low, not cook. High, cook. The world is between low and high linear. Okay? But the minute I say that, oh, we need to have this low, medium, high. We need to investigate somewhere in between. Okay? What does that really mean for a system engineer? means that there is a middle point somewhere there can give me something better performance or lower performance. In other words, is that if I don't believe the world is linear, I believe that it's nonlinear. In other words, is that if you go low, my performance is not good. You go high, my performance is not good. But somewhere in between, Medium, my performance actually a lot better. Uh, if I'm looking for maximum, that will give me higher value. So I could end up low, high, low. 
if you have that gut feeling, then you can convince your boss to spend more money. If you don't believe there's somewhere in between going to make things get bigger, or of course this can be the other way around, right? Uh, uh, high, low, high, if I'm looking for a minimum. So the minute you have three level, okay, you don't propose a three level experiment just to show that you can do ANOVA in three level. You only pr propose that when you think that there is something deserve the investigation. So you're pretty much doing it when you think that the two points are not linear? Uh, that's the very concise way to say what I said in, <laughs> in the last two minutes, three minutes. Exactly. Yeah. If you think that, okay, here. If I, you think that the world is linear, okay, then you know that you can in linear interpolate it, right? So if I, here, 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 as I know how to, how to show that mathematically. Okay, this is A, this is performance. Okay. And then when A is 30, the performance is 250. And when A is 60, the performance is 500. Okay? So if I ask you, what will be the performance when A is 45? Somewhere in between, right? Under what situation you said that I don't need to run another experiment. When it's exactly the middle point. Yeah, so it's equal to this plus this divided by half, right? Oh, uh, uh, it is 250, 125, 375, right? So, if you know the world gonna look like that, would you propose to your boss to run a three-level experiment? You're wasting money. Okay, so actually, uh, later on, I'll have a lot of so-called mixed level. Uh, but when we do mixed level, we can use that as well. There are A effect, B effect, C effect, D effect, all the effect, right? Every one of them can be three-level, can be two-level. You only pick the one you need to investigate somewhere in between as three levels. You follow me? Okay, yeah. And so this is important thinking you have to have before you get into the, uh, the mess. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's really, uh, the computation is really simple. Well, not, 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 well, simple enough. So let me show you how this is done. Okay, I'm still using a regression approach, but I will show you how to do it. Okay, so look at here. What do I have? First, low level, medium level, and high level. Now you see why we use negative one and positive one, because in the middle, I have zero, zero, right? You so, huh? You're cut off on the left side. Oh, again, sorry. So, uh, okay. So, low level, low level, medium level, high level, no problem, right? And then I'll have a low, medium, and high. So, if you ignore 
Okay, don't look at the quadratic part first. Just look at the uh, negative one, positive, uh, negative. Here, if we don't have this part, okay, we don't have this part. Just look at the A linear and B linear part. It's just like the two by two four corner, right? Negative one, negative one, positive one, positive one, negative one, positive one, positive one, negative one. Everybody agree? If you only look at this four corner, this is the, our O experiment, right? But when we add the middle point, okay? When we add a middle point, A will be three level, B will be three level, so totally how many observations, uh, how many uh, conditions we have? Three times three, nine, right? But when you have three times three, nine, there will be a, a problem is that when you do the contrast, I know that I can use the contrast here and do the sum product. I can do the sum product here for the A effect and B effect. But that A effect and B effect is based on what? Zero times this, or negative one times this. Okay, so in other words, here, when we do the, the contrast, okay, zero times whatever the observation equal to what? Zero, right? So in other words, if you use the sum product of linear times linear, you will end up with what? The contrast and the sum of square, just like the old days in the two by two situations. Because this is, you can ignore all the zero part, agree? So people can you see that if I'm only having this one and if I'm only looking at a B, uh, B column and D column, I'm not doing anything different from the two by two experiment. Can you see that? Okay. And of course, this is the reason why I need you to understand what you've been doing. Because three, three level is different from the two level because of that. So now, and then by the way, the sum of this if I do the sum of this contrast, should equal to what? Zero, right? So I have a contrast zero here, and then I have a contrast zero here, okay? But now here's, here comes the tricky part. You already said it. Hey, just linear, linear. But the reason I have the middle points because I need a nonlinear part because in the middle either a little higher or a little lower, right? I cannot use the average. So in order to do that, I need to make the the middle part obvious. So the way how we do it is there there are two different ways you can do it. But this is the convention we use is you make here one 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 here two 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 negative two negative two negative two. Because if you do it this way, three positive one plus three positive one minus three negative two, what would be the, the contrast sum? Well, here, this contrast is zero. What about this contrast? It should also be zero. It's still zero. So in other words, they are zero over zero. That's good. Now here comes the second piece. If I can do this, remember when we say they, they need to be orthogonal contrasts, means what? Not only the sum of itself should equal to zero, the, the dot products of any two of them should equal to zero, agree? And look at this. If I do a sum uh, product, of this guy versus any guy. Which one do you want to pick? Let's just say we'll pick this one. 
Oh. Okay. Will be zero. So in other words, is that every comparison will be an orthogonal contrast comparison. So first, you can investigate the quadratic effect, and then here comes the very, very tricky part. Now I have the linear effect for A, I have a linear effect for B, I have a quadratic effect for A, I have a quadratic effect for B. And they are orthogonal. Guess what will happen next? I can have linear, linear. I can have linear, quadratic. I can have quadratic, linear, quadratic, quadratics. Okay, so first, computationally, would you guys agree? If I have three level, I will end up with eight degrees of freedom. Too, too many effect, too many effect, and a effect here. Everybody see that? If we have three level, we, we use up eight degrees of freedom rather than four degrees of freedom like before. The second thing is that, can any, but he explained to me, I already explained what's quadratic effect for A, quadratic effect for B. Can anybody explain to me what's a linear, linear, quadratic, quadratic, linear, quadratic, quadratic, linear effects really means? Can you see that? So we have four quadratic effects, uh, I mean four nonlinear effects here. Interact well, we have two nonlinear effect, main effect, and then we have four nonlinear interaction terms. What does those things mean? First, okay, linear linear is easy because we have linear linear interaction before, right, for the two way factorial design. So this is like the old days. Okay, now let's talk about linear quadratic for A and linear or quadratic linear for B. Okay, before when we talk about the, 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 the two-way linear linear here is what we're saying is that what? Here's one corner, the left wall against right wall, the front wall against the back wall, and then if there is a Significant effect here means what? Could be from the uh, zero, zero, here. Let me, uh, this, this require some, uh, yeah, I have time. Hmm. You know what? It's wasting my time. Okay, I just do this. A low, A high, and A in the middle. B low, B in the middle, and B high. Okay, here are the not effect. In the old days, we said that if this corner, remember we said that if this corner is low, well, actually, let's, let's just do it this way. If it's parallel, means there's no interactions. Means what? Here is high, here is low. Okay? If B is low on this corner, B is high on the other corner, or, you know, just like this, we can say that there's a B effect, right? And then, I, of course, I can do it this way and say that uh, B 
is high and B is low and nothing in the middle. Okay? You guys agree with me? This is like the old parallel comparison, right? Low is low, high is high. But then we say when there are interaction means what? When A is low, B is low, everything is low. Like this, but Okay, if, okay, we have a situation like this, in the old days means there's crossing, right? It's not parallel. A low, A both low, or A both high, okay? Uh, A low, and B low, or A high and B high, there are one level, but a high and B high, they're in another level. So there are interactions, linear interactions. So now let's talk about what is the quadratic uh, effect. Okay? Uh, I'm, I'm going to do it here, but I, I would like to do it uh, here. If the effect is like this, This is what? There are quadratic B effect, right? B is low, is one level. B is high, is one level. But somewhere in the middle is another level. So everybody sees this is a quadratic B effect. Okay? So how to come up with a quadratic A effect? It's something like this, right? Let me do it for fun. B, A is high, is high. A is low is uh, high, but somewhere in the middle is this. That's man B effect. Agree? So what will be the A B interactions uh, look like? Is something like this, right? If we can come up with a situation like this, for example, uh, let me make it fun, yeah. Suppose red means really high. Suppose red means really high. Green means really low. What does this effect look like? Somewhere in the middle I have a minimum, agree? Can you see that? How many of you can see that? This one shows that somewhere in the middle there is a minimum. Because A high, A low, they're all high. Okay, can anybody show me how to do one uh, somewhere in the middle there is a maximum? How to do that? Just, Just switch the color, right? Everything's going to be low, 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 low. Except you in the middle. Okay? So this now shows that high, 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 low, 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 uh, two type of quadratics. There's one more. So this is or, you know, holding water or this. There's one more. What will be the other one? to talk about interactions. This time is really ugly. Is what? Like the hyperbola. Is going this, how many of you know what is a saddle point? You guys know what is a saddle point? 
And let me show you a setup point. Because I, I'm not good in drawing this. And I don't want to just give you the equations without here. Saddle point. Okay. Here. This is the pure quadratic effect. Holding water or upside down. And saddle point becomes what? Well, the middle is a tricky part. Depends on how you look at it. If you look at it from this way, this point is what? Minimum. But if you look at it from the other side, is maximum. So in other words, is that if I'm going to draw this, is I will have the uh, uh, how am I going to do this? Yeah, I can do this way. And then uh, how am I going to do this? I don't. I don't have uh, a good visualization way of doing this. But can you guys see that if I have a saddle point, is a two-way interactions? Oh, well, time to go, right? Uh, you got another five minutes. Okay. Can you guys see that? the nonlinear effect either max or this is a mean this is a max and this is a settle point you don't have the ability to investigate this kind of stuff unless you have what the uh, the quadratic effect okay and that is where we going Okay, and in, in order to investigate this, if you just want to say that, hey, Simon, just give me the stupid Excel and then I plug and play. You got it. And it's, you know, five minutes, you're done. <laughs> the, the thing is that you need to think it through about why we're doing it and uh, what's the benefit behind it. <clears throat> Okay, and uh, what delay our part of our homework too? Because I want you to redo exam and make sure you can do it. Okay, and for some of the grad student, I think you, you still can drop this class if you don't really want to go all the way through. I promise you, the torture is still there, and you have a projects coming. Okay, and. If you want to stay in this class, you've got to understand the mechanism. You have to visualize it, okay? For the undergrad student, you don't have a project, but uh, what I require you to do is you can do the Excel from scratch. Because if you cannot do this Excel from scratch, the minute I pass you the SAS, okay, I basically give you a cheating mechanism. <laughs> And you're going to, you know, keep going until you get caught if you don't understand what's going on. Okay, and that's, that's what I would like to prevent. Okay, and uh, TA, you give them the uh, exam time due when? Or you haven't given them? Yet? Um, Saturday. Saturday, same time? Okay. Yeah, you, so you have what? 72 up? <sighs> okay, well, but I already cut the homework half. <laughs> Fine. What what do on Sunday? Okay. What what do on Sunday? Well, t w if I keep postpone er, postpone everything, then uh, you gotta wait till next spring to finish your homework ten. Sunday I can do it. Huh? Sunday I can do it. What? Sunday I can do it. Sunday is good, right? Okay. Yeah.